Hi guys, Nick here with Bitgalaxis, bringing you another video covering laser projectile systems and how we move lasers and how we can detect collisions with our lasers. And our last video covered these two leftmost turrets, the green and the purple or pink lasers. And this video we're going to go over our blue and red lasers. And uh, just to kind of recap what we were doing, the green lasers were a system that uses basically just a rigid body. And a Upon instantiating that rigid body, we are uh, giving it a, a velocity, and that velocity is all we do. It's just give it a velocity, it shoots off. The purple or pink laser is using a transform with the rigid body, but during our process of messing around with that, we discovered that that is really not a reliable method for implementing a laser system. The lasers may not always hit correctly, they don't, they don't apply appropriate force. So really, if you're using a rigid body, go ahead and just use the add velocity. Don't worry about trying to do a transform. You want to use the, the functions associated with the rigid body. So today's video is going to cover using transform with raycast. We don't even have a rigid body, and that's going to be the blue laser. And then the fourth option is the red laser, which is using an animation to animate the laser and you could do either having it shoot straight forward. In my case, I just have it moving up and down. And I've actually mixed it up a bit. I have a transform being applied as well. But it also has a rigid body. Um, and so you could effectively use a ray cast with that as well. But the point was just to kind of show that you don't just have to shoot things straight. You can do several different things with your lasers. So let's get into our explanation for our ray cast. For the time being, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the emitter for the first two because we're not going to be really focusing on those and we'll jump into the raycast object or the raycast prefab and the script we're using for that so really the only difference here is what we're doing with scripting the the prefab itself is is going to have transform but you can see i wanted to cover the prefab real quickly because we don't have a rigid body um, we don't have colliders. We just are using a ray cast uh, from this object. So um, we'll jump into the script here real quick and we'll talk about what we're doing in this script. So just like the other uh, two lasers we've made before, we had set a speed um, that's a it's serialized field so we can see it in the editor and we can modify it there. We've got our end of life and then you know, we've determined that end of life in our start function here. And in our update function, we are actually checking. The first thing we're doing is checking if we should destroy the game object because it's too old. So if it's getting to a point where it's, you know, end of life, we're going to destroy it. So we don't have a bunch of objects out there in space floating around, uh, eating up our memory and our processing power. And one other thing that I added here that was not in the others is this mass, which I've set to 15F. Now, the reason I do that is because with the other laser beams that we had set up, we had given them a mass through the rigid body. So now I have to establish that in our script because we don't have a rigid body. We're not going to have physics to apply um, from Unity's physics. So we have to specify something for, the, for our purposes if we want to uh, have some kind of impact on the objects we hit. So let's jump down to the update and look at a couple things. So the first thing we want to talk about is we have set up this raycast hit. And basically we are determining this is where we're going to store information about what we've hit or where we've hit. Um, and so raycast hit, hit, and we've defined it there. Then we have this if statement that is basically doing the raycast and checking for the hit. And if we say physics raycast um, actually does hit something, the physics.raycast is going to return the bool of true. And so if we hit something, then we want to add a force where we've hit and we want to destroy our laser um, and, and do other, we can do other, um, other things as well. Like on the other lasers, I had actually specified, you know, if it's dep depending on the object's tag, whether we wanted to destroy that object also um, or not, or just keep it. But in this case, I'm just, I'm not destroying anything it hits. I'm just saying if the laser hits something, destroy the laser. Um, we could add that other logic if we wanted to. Um, I haven't done it, but it can be done. So the, you can see in the if here, we're saying for the hit, the rigid body, we're gonna add a force to that rigid body. And that's gonna be our mass times our speed 
and we're going to do that forward, the vector three forward. So transform dot forward, and it's going to be at the hit point where we've hit the object at. Now let's get into the actual physics raycast because there's it's a little more complex. That's why I avoided it right off the bat. But the physics dot raycast, we're basically saying we want to send out a ray starting at our position. And we want to move that ray forward. And we want the result of that ray um, where it hit, the information we want for that hit to go to hit. Now you're seeing this out hit. That out is a keyword in C sharp. And if you don't know what out is, um, you kind of have to understand what references are or passing by reference, passing by value. It's kind of like that. Um, a reference is when you say to, like in C sharp, you're saying, hey, I'm going to give you some data, but I'm going to tell you where it's at. Well, let's say that you want to give some, like, let's say you want to say float, right? When you uh, give a function of float, you're actually giving it a copy of that float, unless you say ref float. And then with ref float, you are telling Unity or the program that here is a piece of memory and it has some data. I want you to use whatever data is in that memory. And if you change something with that data, that actual data itself is going to be affected. It's not a copy, it's the actual data itself. Out is similar in that respect. We are specifying a piece of memory, but we're not saying that it has data. We're saying that when you got some result, the result needs to go to where this memory is at. So out doesn't necessarily need to have a value. It can, but if anything changes where that where the result should be, we're not talking about return because return is saying we're done, go ahead and pass this value back because the return value is actually going to be uh, true or false, whether it hits something. So we're saying we need to know what happened with the hit. So put it in this hit value. Don't send a copy, put it here, put it in memory. And that's all that really means. So just remember that all out means is we're just putting it in hit. We're storing the data in our raycast hit very value where it sits in memory, not a copy. We're actually putting it there um, as it's being processed. So, um, and then lastly, the time dot delta time times speed. We are saying that the end of this ray should go as far out as we expect our projectile to travel. And so if it hits something before it gets to the end, we're not going to move it. We're going to destroy it. Now, I'll point out something when we go back and we're going to show you what's happening and what we should change with this. But that that is a problem the way I've done it here. And you'll see why in just a second. Um, then if we don't have a hit, go ahead and transform, translate forward times the speed times time dot delta time. So go ahead and move the object if we don't hit anything. Otherwise, if we do, we have a collision, destroy, that's the original if. So I'm going to show you something real quick um, and an issue I have. So I've added this trail renderer to each of these objects. But if you notice kind of as soon as it hits, you see the entire laser disappear. And that may be hard to see. I may have to slow it down. But once it hits an object, um, the entire laser disappears. And the reason being is because I have stated there's a hit and the hit was ahead, but the object might still be moving. So the tail end of the laser should still kind of go into the object. And what I should be doing instead in my script is saying, you know, just tracking uh, we've hit, here's the current position um, for the next update. And then, uh, you know, let the laser stay there so that that trail renderer kind of expires behind it. Um, or we could just remove the trail renderer. But if you had like a longer laser, um, you're still going to be destroying the whole object as soon as it hits. And it may look like it prematurely disappeared. So um, just be careful with that. You'd have to program something special. Um, but you know, again, you, you would still have the same problem regardless of which one you use. Um, but these trail renderers, Add a little bit of complexity that you have to watch out for because they don't look great if you just destroy the entire object as soon as it hits. So with the animation, um, this is really just an animation. You can apply a transform forward. You can give a rigid body a velocity and then apply an animation or you could just make the animation go and loop. Um, either way, 
Um, all I've done here is just added some animation up and down and a little bit forward and then I've also moved it forward with the transform as well because it wasn't moving as fast as I like originally and I didn't want to redo the entire animation or modify it too much because you know it's easy enough to, to combine them. So um, this has a rigid body so it's doing collision detection via rigid body with a transform which is not the best solution. Uh, so you know it needs to be modified really I was just wanting to demonstrate what you can do with it. Now if you're new to Unity or not very familiar with the animation system, it can get really complex. So if you want to apply an animation, let's say you have a rocket that goes in circles or up and down or things like that, I'll kind of go through a quick, simple setup you can do with an animation, my, my easy way of getting there. And the first thing you have to do is either go into the object or the prefab you want to work on and make sure you have selected the object you want to animate. Um, just make sure you have it selected. Here I do, I have the target, and we're just gonna make our target bob up and down. And an easy way to do this is make sure you go select your object, go to animation, and then you'll see down here, you can create an animation. And it's gonna set up everything you need to do this. So we're just gonna say target bob is the name of our animation. You can see anim, target bob that anim. And that gets us, we have a controller now, we have the, uh, the animator available now as well, so we don't have to worry about setting all that up. It's all been done for us because of how we approach that. But let's go back here, click on the animation for our target, and we're gonna say add property. And in this case, we're just gonna change the transform and I'm just going to change the position to keep it really simple. And we're going to expand this and pick on our position.y. And all you have to do is click on the record. Well, actually, stop before I go there. Click on the time that you want something to change. And then click on the record button. And I'm going to move this up one. I press control to move it up one even. And this is going to be zero seconds this is going to be one second and this is going to be you know half a second and so what you'll see is i recorded that and every time you want to move or have it move in some way you just have to move to that spot and you can see right here if, as we drag back and forth i recorded the position to be here well if i were to go here and i were to drag it down now i recorded a new spot and you can see as we drag back and forth this is going to be going up and then down and up again real quick. But I don't want this. I actually want to delete this key. It's a key whenever you do that. Um, so wherever you change it manually on the timing, it's going to add a new key and it's going to interpolate for you the position. So uh, for, to keep it simple, you can manually change how those curves work. Uh, in fact, I could show you that real quick too, I guess. So we'll say curves here and you can see here here's our curves and if you want it to be you know be a little bit different you can make it different but uh, really I just want to go back to my my dope sheet put my time in there make sure that's the only thing that's different and we can stop recording and play and we'll see that it goes up and down up and down and now if we play and we fire you can see that our targets are moving up and down uh, within a one second time frame. So anyway, if you like this video and found it useful, go ahead and hit the like button. I'd really appreciate it. I thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you next time.